Hey there, and welcome to a Less Than 10 Talk. I am Piper Harris, so let's get to it. So take a beat. So I have to tell you, yesterday was not a fun day. I had a dentist appointment, which I hate, and then my boys had a dentist appointment, and unfortunately, my dislike of the dentist has been passed down to my youngest. And he's got some fears. You know, he hates the... Um, x-rays and they just you know they make him gag and it's just he's built it up in his mind and so I discussed this with my own dentist and they said hey listen we've got this trick you put salt on the tongue and it helps you know them not gag so I brought my boys to the dentist and I said to the hygienist here's a bag of salt I want you to put salt on his tongue to help him with the gag and she's like oh yeah we have our own salt we'll totally do that well they came out my son, my youngest son came out and he was very upset and you could see it all over his face, all over his body and a different hygienist brought him out and she stands up in front of me and she was pretty young. She might have been maybe mid 20s and she says, you know, he doesn't gag at all. It's all in his head and he started crying and I looked at her and the way that she spoke to me, she was demeaning my son who is 10 years old and is quite aware of how she's speaking. And I said to her, I said, hey, would you like to have this conversation in private? So as I'm looking at her, I can feel my anger just spilling over. Mama Bear is kicking in. I thought, okay, Piper, take a breath. And then she says, why don't you take a beat? I bit my tongue for everybody else in the waiting room and for my son's benefit. Because at that point, that woman showed me that she was incapable of having an adult conversation with a client's parent. So I took a beat. I listened to my son and my eldest son told me what happened and took place in the back and it was horrific. And I ended up calling the dentist and I forged a complaint. But here's the thing. The thing is that I have heard this a lot by women. Just take a breath. Just take a beat. And the thing is that I'm seeing with females and female peers is this is used as a tool of manipulation. Was this hygienist saying that like, oh, I'm sorry? No, she was not. She simply did not want to deal with the situation. In fact, I had a boss like that too. When situations arose and I would bring things to her attention, she just didn't want to deal with it. She didn't like conflict. In fact, she kind of fell away from him. And she would say things like, just take a breath. It was as if she was brandishing a stick to beat me away. Here's the thing. I do see this a lot. And I don't understand the promulgation of women labeling women as aggressive for clearly setting boundaries or clearly standing for themselves. Was I in the wrong for what I needed to do to protect my son? Absolutely not. Situations with my previous boss, there was some massive disrespect going on and I had to take the steps with my current client load. She just simply didn't want to manage it. So why is it, why is it that women especially brandish this stick? It's a tool of a manipulation. Take a breath, take a beat. I've seen women do it in their, their marriages, in their relationships. It's pretty common manipulative tool. The thing is, is I think that it's based in insecurity and apathy. Many times people don't like conflict or an opinion that's opposite of their own. Uh, you know, they're not sure how to manage the situation, what to say. They question if they can actually speak up or speak to what you're talking about, or they're worried about the ramifications. Um, and they work out of a confirmation bias. That is, this works for me. I'm right, so everything else is right, right? It's that echo chamber. Other times, I really think it's simply apathy. Apathy for what it truly looks like to lead individuals. Apathy to really be introspective and really work at your position and who you are. Apathy in acknowledging others' feelings. Many times, these individuals are overwrought. They're completely over their head and they just swing into apathy. It's an avoidance technique so that they can cocoon themselves from what's taking place, from taking action, for taking a beat themselves and ascertaining what's going on in the situation. This is really tough, and yesterday was really tough, but I know as a mom, I did the right thing. I took a beat, 
but not because of what she said. I took a beat because there is a way for us to set boundaries as women without being labeled a bitch and without being labeled as aggressive. Now, I understand that you might be in situations with a manager, a boss, and they just simply don't want to deal with you. They're very passive aggressive. I've dealt with those too, too. And I really believe this is one of their key tools. It's a manipulation tool. It's that strong arm to push you off. But here's the thing. We have a choice to be an example or a cautionary tale. I showed my son how to be an example. I hoped to show individuals in my life, this is how you go through conflict. This is how you face conflict. This is how you lead and influence others. So here are five steps that you can take when you're taking a beat. <laughs> Number one, consider where the other person is coming from. Are they having a bad day? Is it stressful? So for example, yesterday I did take a beat and I thought, okay, this gal is young. Maybe she's had a bad day. Maybe she's already got in trouble and maybe she just shouldn't work with kids. So I took a beat. Number two, ask yourself, do I know my audience? Do I know this individual? Can I trust them? Um, and you know, do I know anything about them? I didn't know this gal, but when it came to my previous boss, I knew the audience. I knew how she would react and what her, you know, temperament was, which was passive aggressive. Same with this gal. So I understood the animal in which I was working with. Number three, you need to explain and justify your position. Bring your reasons why. Regardless of how they react, this is how you take a breath and you set out the steps. This is what took place. This is what took place. This is what took place. This is what now needs to take place. Number four, how can you clarify this with the individual without arrogance or anger? You really need to think about that. So it's okay to take a beat or take a breath to just hold down that anger. You know, the verse says, uh, quick to listen, slow to be, speak, slower to anger. There's some great wisdom in that. And number five, number five, and this is so important. Assure yourself that no one has the authority to invalidate you and invalidate what is going on. Was I in the right with my son yesterday? 100%. Do I have any questions on how I handled and managed the situation? Absolutely not. In other situations with a boss, when I brought these conflicts to them, it's not about how they react. It's about how I react. I cannot influence my boss or my manager to be better, to not be passive aggressive, but I can handle the situation with integrity. It's not bitchy and it's not aggressive. So today, when you think, hey, take a beat, take a breath, absolutely follow these five steps, but do not use it as a tool of manipulation and do not promulgate the thought that just because you're setting out boundaries that you are aggressive. That's just simply not true. There are ways to lead into a conflict and do it professionally and with integrity. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining me today for a Lesson 10 Talk. I'm Piper Harris with Sneakered Life Coaching. Please visit me at piperharris.net for a lot more of my videos, podcasts, anything else, and I will be talking to you all very soon.